Karine, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to provide a brief report on the Iranian ballistic missile attack against Israel that occurred earlier today. I can take just a few questions because this is an ongoing situation and I need to get back to my desk. Today, Iran launched nearly 200 ballistic missiles towards targets in Israel. The United States military coordinated closely with the Israeli Defense Forces to help defend Israel against this attack. U.S. naval destroyers joined Israeli air defense units in firing interceptors to shoot down inbound missiles. President Biden and Vice President Harris monitored the attack and the response from the White House Situation Room, joined in person and remotely by their national security team. We are still working with the IDF and the authorities in Israel to assess the impact of the attack. But at this time, and I stress at this time, we do not know of any deaths in Israel. We are tracking the reported death of a Palestinian civilian in Jericho in the West Bank. We do not know of any damage to aircraft or strategic military assets in Israel. In short, based on what we know at this point, this attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. This was first and foremost the result of the professionalism of the IDF, but in no small part because of the skilled work of the U.S. military and meticulous joint planning in anticipation of the attack. We are also aware of reports of a terrorist attack in Jaffa that took the lives of a number of Israeli civilians and wounded several others today. Our condolences go out to the families of the victims and to the family of the Palestinian civilian in Jericho. Obviously, my update here is based on early reports, and we reserve the right to amend and adjust as necessary as we gather more information the word fog of war was invented for a situation like this. This is a fluid situation. We will consult with the Israelis on next steps in terms of the response and uh, how to deal with what Iran has just done, and we will continue to monitor for further threats and attacks from Iran and its proxies. We are particularly focused on protecting U.S. service members in the region, and with that, I'll take just a few questions. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Uh, is the administration making any preparations to evacuate U.S. citizens from Lebanon or elsewhere in the region? We have been very clear for some time now uh, that U.S. citizens should avail themselves of commercial means to depart Lebanon, given everything that's going on. We have said that from this podium, from multiple podiums, we continue to say that, but we have not uh, begun triggering a non-combatant emergency evacuation, a NEO, um, and do not have an intention to do so at this time. If that changes, we'll let you know. But we continue to reinforce the point. American citizens in Lebanon should follow the guidance from the State Department, which is uh, to find civil, uh, civilian commercial means to depart, because in extremis, we may not be able uh, to get them out safely. Yes. Thanks, Jake. Uh, what is the U.S. view on whether Israel should retaliate, and what is your concern about this leading to a wider escalation of war in the region? We've had some initial discussions with the Israelis in the aftermath of this at the military level and also at the White House to Prime Minister's office level. We'll continue those conversations in the hours ahead. I'm not going to prejudge or get ahead of anything. We want to have some deep consultations with the Israelis, and I'll have more to report to you after we get the opportunity for deeper discussions. And yeah. in the region? Obviously, this is a significant escalation by Iran, a significant event, and it is equally significant that we were able to step up with, with Israel and create a situation in which uh, no one was killed in this attack in Israel, so far as we know at this time. We are now going to look at what the appropriate next steps are to secure, first and foremost, American interests, and then to promote stability to the maximum extent possible as we go forward. Yeah. Back in April, the President's message to Israel was to take the win when the U.S. and Israel were able to intercept the barrage of Iranian missiles. Is he recommending a similarly limited response this time? I will not, from this podium, uh, share the President's recommendations. Uh, he will have the opportunity to share them directly. We're going to have, as I said, ongoing consultations with the Israelis. It is too early for me to tell you anything publicly in terms of our assessment or in terms of uh, what our expectations are of the Israelis or the advice that we will give them. So will he be speaking to Prime Minister Netanyahu today? I don't have anything to announce from this podium, but I can tell you that he is tracking this minute by minute. We are very much deeply in touch with the Israelis, and insofar as we have calls to read out, we'll make sure to read them out with you. Just last question, then I'll turn it over. Thank you, Jake. In April, after Iran struck Israel, uh, the is U.S. issued a number of sanctions um, as a consequence. 
This morning, the president said there would be severe consequences if Iran carried out this attack. What are those consequences, and are they more severe than sanctions? Totally legitimate question, and that answer will come based on the conversations and consultations we have with our Israeli counterparts. It's too soon for me to stand before you today and give you an answer. What I can tell you is this. Uh, we are proud of the actions that we've taken alongside Israel to, to protect and defend Israel. We have made clear that there will be consequences, severe consequences for this attack, and we will work with Israel to make that the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.